Good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to hearing number 13 of the 180 regular period of session of the Inter-American Commission of, on Human Rights. This is about the situation of the human rights of women in Guatemala. It has been requested by different organizations from the civil society. I want to read the representatives of the state of Guatemala and the different organizations. My name is Julissa Mantilla Falcón. I am the first vice president of the Inter-American Commission. I am with Commissioner Smeralda Rosemena, uh, country rapporteur, Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, rapporteur on the rights of women, and Commissioner Pia, uh, Flavia Piovesan, second vice president of the commission. Also executive secretary Tania Renault, the special rapporteur, Garcia Muñoz and the Assistant Executive Secretary Maria Claudia Pulido. I want to explain the methodology of the hearing. We are going to start with the participation of the civil society for 20 minutes, then representatives of the state for 20 more minutes, and the commission will make comments and questions for 20 minutes as well. Then we start the second round of participation, civil society for 12 minutes, and at the same time, the same time for the state, and the commission will conclude. Please, we have a timer in the platform. I will ask you to pay attention to that timer in order to respect the available time. We have simultaneous interpretation and captions as well. These hearings are being broadcasted and the recording can be found in our YouTube channel. Please leave your cameras on and when you are not speaking, please mute your microphones. Having said this, we are going to start the hearing with the participation of the civil society. I will ask you to introduce yourself, your names, the organizations that you represent as you participate. I give the floor to the civil society. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners, executive secretary, members of the executive secretariat, special rapporteur on the social, economic, cultural, environmental rights, representatives of the states, and other persons, other persons present at the hearing. We would like to appreciate the space that was provided to address these important issues. My name is Valeria Pedraza from Women's Like Worldwide, and I'm accompanying this hearing by representatives of the requesting organizations. In order to start, we would like to point out that what happens to women in Guatemala does not happen in the vacuum. To understand our situation, it's important to recapitulate some events that occurred in recent years that make the Guatemalan context very complex and increasingly restrictive for the respect and guarantee of human rights. To begin with, it should be noted that the last two governments have implemented a systematic agenda to weaken the institutional framework of the state with the aim of eliminating any opposition or counterweight to its actions and interests. Some examples that illustrate this statement are the decision of the government of Jimmy Volales not to renew the mandate of the International Commission Against Impunity in Guatemala, CICIG, which paralyzed the investigation for acts of corruption and impunity. The disputed elections of magistrate of the Supreme Court of Justice in which even the public ministry indicated uh, influence. The election of the Attorney General Consuelo Borres Argueta, who with her actions protected um, powerful groups and have evaded in many cases the exercise of her responsibilities in the face of ir irregular actions by public officials. The constant and systematic persecution of the human rights ambassador reflected in the withholding of his budget by Congress and numerous impeachment attempts. The constant persecution and acts of stigmatization, siege, surveillance, criminalization against prosecutors of the Special Prosecutor's Office, against impunity, as well as magistrate, judges, and, and others. The election of the Constitutional Court, in which people who are currently being investigated for acts of corrections were elected, which contrasts with the refusal of Congress to swear Gloria Porras. Finally, constant attempts and initiatives aimed at using religion as a basis for decision-making in open violation of the principle of secular state. Furthermore, we must highlight the recent decision of the new constitution of the Constitutional Court, which declares several um, parasphalic decree for 2020, which reforms the NGO law. 
this law grants the Ministry of the Interior the power to cancel the registration of NGOs that do not comply with the provisions of said norm or that according to it affect public order without the possibility of having the right of defense and also increasing the fiscal control over organizations. The Commission and its Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression have expressed a concern in this regard. However, they have not been heard since this reform entered into force and it is currently in the hands of the court to resolve the various unconstitutionality actions that have been presented as of June 21st. The common objective of this, all these actions described has been to eliminate any type of counterweight to the interest of the groups in power, thus generating a panorama in which historically excluded and discriminated populations such as women are unprotected and defenseless. Understanding this context in this hearing, we will delve into the impact that these events have on girls and women, and we will refer to some issues that especially, especially affect this population, which have to do with regressive changes in public policies or absence of these to face current problems. Unfortunately, these weaknesses that we'll point out are not isolated and rather are derived from a vision of the state that intends to continue giving women a secondary role loaded with stereotypes, justifying the discrimination and violence they suffer. Now I give the floor to my colleague, Sonia Acabal. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners. The first issue that we want to highlight is the persecution of women human rights defenders. In this regard, we must categorically point out that the arrival of the government of Alejandro Ramatei, the situation of vulnerability was uh, aggravated. According to Udefegua, between January and December 15, 2020, a total of 1,004 attacks on defenders were registered. 338 were committed against women. Among the most recent attacks and violence are criminalization, harassment, illegal raids, hate campaigns, death threats, sexual violence, femicides, and even trans femicides that occurred a few days ago against Andrea Gonzalez and Ceci Ixpata president and member of the organization Otras Reinas de la Noche, respectively. The situation we face as defenders derives from the defense of our rights and our full autonomy. By daring to denounce corruption and violence against women, the government wants to end the feminist movement and the progress we have made over the years. An example of this is that the Guatemalan women's group that receives resources from the state to care for women survivors of violence has been subject to a revision measure of the management of resources that come from international cooperation, even when the reform of NGO law was not in force. On the other hand, we, we must also highlight the lengthy criminal proceedings faced by several defenders. For example, since 2018, their process is open against Maria Kukchok for the defense of the land and territory, and against Ixmucane, Solorzano, Isabel Juarez, and Lenina Garcia for participating in a public demonstration that denounced violence and pregnancy in girls and adolescents called March of the Powerful Volva. In addition, in 2020, the defender Sebastiana Pablo was denounced for the crimes of sedition, robbery, and banning of the municipality of Joyabar. She has been deprived of liberty for nine months and in a situation that puts her life at risk. Additionally, there are processes against other women, judges, prosecutors, and um, Magistrates, some have even uh, gone into exile. Added to the above persecution, defamation, surveillance, and control of the media and independent journalism. This situation has directly impacted journalists and communicators. For example, Lucia Chu, Andrea Chu, Michelle Mendoza, Alejandra Maria Arana, Jody Garcia, Anastasia Mejia, among others. Another example that illustrates the various types of persecution we face 
is the cancellation of the legal status of Planned Parenthood in Guatemala in 2020. This organization had obtained its authorization in accordance with Guatemalan law. However, due to pressure from groups that are contrary to sexual and reproductive rights, the president ordered the arbitrary and illegal cancellation of settling and status contravening freedom of association, the diligence of the state and specifically of the public ministry in persecuting and criminalizing us is at odds with the lack of investigation of events that violate our human rights. Likewise, we see with great concern how the state institutions are willing to intimidate, besiege, persecute, monitor the student population, defenders, journalists, and organizations that show and denounce acts of corruption and impunity. An example of these are the actions that are being taken by authorities in the investigation of the peaceful demonstrations carried out in November and December 2020. the state uh, institutions in charge of protecting women's rights. Before taking office, the current president of Guatemala made public his intention to close the presidential secretariat for women supreme, a purpose that was materialized in the first months of his government by delaying the appointment of the head of the secretariat and not hiring suitable personnel, which was another fact. The absence of leadership, coordination, and advice in SEPREM has kept policies and plans aimed at favoring women in a slumber. Although a few days ago, the head of the Presidential Secretariat for Women was appointed thanks to the insistence of women's organizations. Today, we would like to reiterate and request that the President support with resources and political will the actions that Dr. Ana Leticia Aguilar carried out to strengthen this secretariat. And we would like to take this opportunity to congratulate this appointment. Another issue that we would like to point out is that the few efforts that had been made to recover and strengthen the national coordinator for the prevention of intra-family violence against women, Kona Previ, it was, it was uh, stopped. They put a stop to it in 2012 and was reopened in 2016, but without any conditions or budget to uh, fulfill its mandate. With the ineffectiveness of Kona Previ, the effective implementation of the National Plan for the Prevention and Eradication of Violence Against Women, PLANOVI 2020-2029, is put at risk. This weakening condemns thousands of girls and adolescents of this and future generations to live at the risk of suffering violence and hinders the country's ability to comply with international commitments regarding the eradication of violence against women. Another example is the weakening of the Comprehensive Support Centers for Women Survivors of Violence, CAIMUS, which currently do not have the funds that the state should grant them for their proper functioning. These places are part of the comprehensive care for women who have survived acts of violence, their sons and daughters, and are coordinated by women's organizations. There are currently 12 CAIMUS at a national level, but to date there are not enough resources. Although there is a budget in favor of the uh, Guatemalan women's group for four CAIMUS, these resources have been delivered late or not delivered at all. For the rest of the CAIMUS, there is no assigned budget, and this affects thousands of women who suffer from violence. In addition to this, they have wanted to remove the budget allocation that was assigned to the Guatemalan women's group, and a minimum budget has been disputed 
there was it was very little and it is under dispute between the organizations instead of increasing the actual allocation so what this shows is that guaranteeing the right of women to live free from violence is not a priority we would also like to denounce the fact that in recent years there has been an improper use and manipulation of the law against femicide and other forms of violence against women which aim to protect the life and integrity of women who experience violence and it should not be used to conceal acts of corruption and impunity committed by public officials subject to criminal investigation the op the purpose of this law is not to obstruct the exercise of journalism or freedom of the press the state is responsible for ensuring the strict compliance with the law against femicides in the terms established in the Convention of Belém do Pará. I would like to give the floor to my partner, Dinora Hill. Good afternoon, commissioners. I am here representing the multidisciplinary group for reproductive laws and the intersectoral group for sexual and reproductive rights. We would like to mention that public regressive public policies that have been promoted by the government and that impact our rights include three relevant cases. First one is initiative 5272 called Law for the Protection of Life and Family, which seeks to classify abortion as a crime, the natural death of the embryo at any stage of the pregnancy. It seeks to toughen penalties for the crime of abortion, prohibit all educational policies or programs related to sexual diversity, gender ideology, and sexual freedom. This initiative has not been approved by Congress, but there is a risk that it will be put back on the agenda for approval. The public policy for the protection of life and the institutional nature of family which was announced this year and whose drafting will be in charge of a temporary technical committee created by government agreement 45 2021 without the organizations of society having any access to the information regarding what this policy is about and we have not been allowed to join the committee due to this lack of transparency and considering the previous uh, history, the prior history, we are against the creation of the technical committee and the drafting of this public policy as we consider that the state must comply with international standards on human rights and implement the policies and the laws that exist. Thirdly, we would like to mention that on May 31st, the congressman of the permanent commission to gather together with the official party presented the initiative 5915 freedom of religion and belief in this uh, one they sought to uh, grant uh, this freedom of conscience and strengthen the barriers against education uh, against sexual sexual education so that parents can oppose to their children receiving sexual education this initiative also seeks to uh, protect confessions so that no authorities uh, can force them to be revealed, despite the crimes that we know that religious leaders commit, as well as corruption and vulneration of rights. This was known in Congress after two days, so this shows the priority that is given to this type of initiative in detriment of the rights of women. While the state is in charge of promoting regress policies. The uh, bill called Law for the Transformation of uh, Children and Adolescents Who Are Victims of uh, Sexual Violence was positively received uh, based on, uh, and of course, many things were not taken into consideration with respect to human rights and stereotypes. The state is weakening this institution and in the meantime, they are responsible for ensuring the rights of women. The violence against women, however, increases constantly. According to the information provided by the Guatemalan group of women between uh, 2012 2020 there were many violent deaths of women and uh, in 2021 we had 172 violent deaths of which 42 percent are femicides 
Additionally, restrictions to access legal and safe abortion, according to the Guttmacher Institute and in its 2006 study, continue to cause more than 65,000 induced abortions in Guatemala which puts the lives and health of women at serious risk, especially those of girls and adolescents facing unwanted pregnancies as a result of sexual violence. Unfortunately, there are no updated figures on the number of abortions in Guatemala, nor are there measures that have been taken to allow us to affirm that the situation has improved. Only last year, 50,354 pregnancies were reported in girls and adolescents between the ages of 10 and 17. This despite the fact that according to the criminal code, carnal access by any means with a minor under 14 years of age is classified as rape. This number of cases does not correspond to the number of investigations carried out by the public ministry for crimes of sexual violence. Overall, we can affirm that the current Guatemalan government responds to the mandates of religious organizations that have a discourse that speak publicly against feminism and women's rights. Even the president of the Republic himself has participated in various meetings and has promised not to endorse organizations that in his view go against life. This has as a consequence, a reduction in the participation forums available for women's organizations in Guatemala. Additionally, the government's alliances with these associations violate the secular nature of the state, since government representatives participate in their capacity as public officials and have even signed institutional letters of collaboration with these groups. Statements made by public officials in the framework of these types of events contribute to discriminating and stigmatizing feminism and the LGBTQ plus community. Unfortunately, several of the events described are not new to the Commission. In a thematic hearing held in 2016, women's organizations denounced several of these events. However, the situation for women has not improved and on the contrary, has worsened. Because of this situation and despite the risks that we face, we are here today because we have the legitimate right to defend our work and because Guatemalan women need us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the civil society. I would like to give the floor to the representative of the states. state, also 20 minutes, please. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm Ana Leticia Aguilar. I'm the Presidential Secretary of Women's Affairs. Dear uh, commissioners, dear petitioners, and ladies and gentlemen who are part of the uh, state of Guatemala, please, uh, I would like to present this uh, document which is uh, of this commission in Guatemala that includes the Presidential Secretariat for Women, the Public Ministry, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Governance, the Ministry of Public Finance, uh, the uh, General uh, Attorney's Office, and the Secretariat for Human Rights and Peace. In keeping with the concepts of peace and transparency, which have characterized the relations of the Guatemalan state with the commission, we are here with the best predisposition to exchange information between the parties. And we would like to emphasize that we do not want to use this forum to blame others at an international level. So we call uh, everyone to uh, respect uh, the, the, the issues mentioned in this system. Uh, Walter Detran is the Director of Surveillance and Promotion of Human Rights of the Presidential Commission for Peace and Human Rights, and I would like to give him the floor initially. Go ahead. Thank you very much, commissioners. I have the honor to be addressing you on behalf of the state of Guatemala. In this thematic hearing convened by the Honorable Commission, and we hope that it will allow us to address the issues mentioned by the petitioners. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights has a mandate to issue uh, the, these uh, measures according to the organizations that are 
petitioning. In terms of prevention of violence against women, the state of Guatemala would like to mention the fact that in order to prevent acts of crime and ensure a peaceful society, we organize society communities at a municipal level with a view to strengthening governance in the territories and prevent conflicts. In this sense, in 2020, we created 264 commissions to prevent violence at a national level, and this equals 78% of the defined goal. The general government policy between 2020 and 2024 establishes as the priority of reducing violence against children, women, and intra-family violence. It is an interest of this policy to promote a culture of denouncement where uh, we can create strategies to eradicate this form of violence. As a result, the government will define these actions within the framework of this commission to prevent violence con aprevi, with the institutions that are included in it. Two campaigns were held at a national and interdepartmental level in different areas. For example, the launch of aware, the awareness campaign for COVID-19, and it was addressed at women, and it read, you're not alone, break the silence. This was targeting uh, women and children, the elderly, and people with disabilities. We also promoted the campaign for awareness called I Report or I Denounce, and it was a hashtag on social media, and it had the support of the UNDP other actions from the government to prevent violence against women and family violence, including support and follow-up for actions to investigate different actions and uh, from the Ministry of the uh, Public uh, Attorney and uh, other measures against women's uh, women trafficking. The Ministry of Government has carried out training uh, sessions for officials in general and for the Specialized Crime Unit. They have received training on human rights, the search for women who are missing, violence uh, against women, family violence, and issues regarding children and adolescents taking into account gender issues. We have trained a total of uh, uh, more than 14,000 agents, and we have had training programs addressing uh, police officers, including the strengthening of capacities for police officers, human rights, and other projects to protect people in this regard. Secondly, channels for addressing issues of violence. The, our ministry uh, the, had a guide, set of guidelines and a protocol for investigating uh, crimes against women in the private and the public sectors. We built a channel also to expand the services and also a telephone number 1572 to receive reports or accusations of uh, uh, violence against women. A general policy and a protocol to fully address crimes against women and uh, children. In October 2020, we implemented another phone number to uh, receive reports regarding cases of pregnancies of uh, girls under the age of 14 in private and public clinics in the entire territory. Also, uh, the uh, prosecutor's office also deals with issues of uh, girls who are pregnant under the age of 14 and keeps a record of sex offenders. With respect to femicides, uh, there was a resolution 04-2020 approved to investigate cases of femicide. This will close a process focusing on an alignment of the measures, and it is known as um, uh, this includes campaigns and other services provided by the prosecutor's office. There is an observatory for women that includes statistics work and a web portal, ayuda.gt, which uh, describes assistance services for women and a digital channel called Yo Denuncio, I Denounce, for these types of crimes. Different institutions, such as the Ministry of Public Finance, is drafting a protocol to prevent and address different cases of sexual harassment in the workplace. This uh, is not uh, unique for this ministry, and it's also being implemented in other ministries of the executive branch. Regarding the weakening of the human rights institutions, we would like to report the following. The CEPREM is uh, assistant 
in the policies to help uh, women in Guatemala and promote democratic culture. Since 2013, they have institutionalized a budgetary classification for gender issues and during the period 2014 and 2019, they registered more than 44 million quetzales. In 2016, we created an institutional panel for gender equity, which includes the Secretariat of Planning of the Presidency of the Ministry of Public Finance, CEPREM, and the Civil Society. Ever since it was created and put into practice, CEPREM has undertaken its mandate with no interruptions whatsoever. We would like to mention the fact that there is no exclusion of the civil society organizations in the process of selection to appoint the uh, presidential secretary for women's issues. In 2021, we had an open call for the selection of the president of this commission and the actual president of the country defined the process for selection. As a result, on June 23rd of this year, the constitutional president of our republic appointed Ana Leticia Aguilar Teise, who has a long history in defending women's rights in Guatemala. She had had this position, held this position in prior years and uh, the uh, and other roles as well. And she also worked in entities of the uh, of interregional entities, international cooperation and the civil society. So uh, in the view of the President of the Republic, she is a suitable person to fulfill this responsibility. In the sense, Seprem carries out activities by law. For example, right now, it is drafting the 10th report of the CEDAW, and uh, it is supported by different uh, inter interventions. And uh, this process was convened on May 14th, and many different women's organizations participated. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the development of the activities were held virtually. They couldn't continue face-to-face, -face, and we thank the cooperation of different international organizations. The state of Guatemala has moved forward with integrated models. For example, in March 2021, there was a signature to fight against women's violence and a new model to assist women who are victims of violence was created. It's called MIMI and its offices it's loca is are located in the city. This model provides articulated legal services, health, economic empowerment, and social care, all in one single place for women who are victims of violence in the metropolitan area. This in the first stage under an approach of human rights, gender perspective, and cultural relevance. Another significant progress made for women and adolescents who have suffered from this violence is an integrated model for uh, their, to address their problems called MIME. This includes cultural aspects and uh, remedies for the uh, sufferings of these women and girls. This model guarantees comprehensive attention of children and adolescents that are victims, and the uh, General Attorney's Office provides attention with institutions that protect this uh, particular group of the population. In the Congress, there are five bills related to violence against women. That is an initiative that will pass a law for victims of sexual violence and domestic violence and uh, slavery as well. And also to sanction obstetrician uh, violence for women in Guatemala. In connection with the National Coordinator for the Prevention and Prevention, prevention of and Sanction of uh, Violence, Domestic Violence, five assemblies took place in 2019 9, 2021, and 2, 2020. In 2021, there were different activities among them, assemblies of the National Coordination for the Prevention of Intrafamiliar Violence. In that sense, on March 25th, they held the first meeting of the coordination in order to appoint different members for the six working commissions, follow up of the National Plan for the Eradication of Violence Against Women. Also, 
there was a follow-up of the agreement between the state and the uh, Grupo Guatemalteco de Mujeres for the support of uh, women who have survived violence. And also the program to support specialized organizations hiring staff through the program to prevent domestic violence. The second meeting took place on May 25th and work meetings of the Commission of the Coordinator took place from 9 to 16 April. The first extraordinary meeting took place in June to present the strategy to implement the national plan for the prevention of violence against women that will be approved in the third ordinary assembly of the coordinator with the participation of the institutions and civil society organizations. The third vice ministry of the Ministry of Governments through the unit for the prevention of violence, USPB, the program is coordinated for the prevention of domestic violence and it has trained public officials um, regarding violence against women with an ethnic approach. Different campaigns were developed, such as uh, the campaign um, Rompe el Silencio. There was also a coordination between the Ministry of Education and social assistance called Prevent with Education to foster different actions among the ministry to prevent teenage pregnancy, sexual violence, and rape in order to comply with international standards, with a gender approach focused on human rights, women's rights for the attention of um, children and adolescents. That agreement has also reached medical staff that are trained in with the Miega uh, guidance section reproductive rights. Different organizations for the youth or different ONGOs have been trained. And also we launched a campaign to prevent teenage pregnancy that was called Ponete las Pilas in different municipalities. Regarding the National Plan for the Prevention and Eradication of Domestic Violence, against women, the CONAPREVI in the assembly held, launched the plan for the prevention of education of violence against women for a 10 year period from 2020. To, and that is a plan designed by the government of Guatemala to comply with international duties regarding human rights to guarantee women a life free of violence that was elaborated with the um, Secretariat guided by CONAPREVI. That includes implementation of policy number five for the protection of women and also the coordinator for the eradication and prevention of violence uh, against women. This plan to eradicate and prevent violence against women requires uh, special resources in order to develop policies to guarantee equality um, um, between men and women so that they can live a life free of violence. This will adjust to the strategic guidelines of the plan in a period of 10 years that has to do with an, a strategy to implement a plan for the eradication and prevention of violence against women 2020-2029 that is being validated and progresses made are the following. In May 2021, there was a meeting with the um, section to strengthen the technical guidelines of uh, the strategy for national commitments. Also, there was a meeting to strengthen methodology, the elaboration of the implementation strategy 2020-2029. 
in June 2021, the socialization of the preliminary version of the implementation of the plan, including methodology elements. And June 29, 2021, an extraordinary meeting to approve the strategy to implement the 2020-29 plan. There are 11 centers for uh, to provide support to victims, women victims of violence. The Commission of Advisory for the Prevention of Violence, of Domestic Violence, will approve the tool to elect the specialized organizations and at the same time, in June 14, based on Article 14, 2021, the General Secretariat of the Presidency received a proposal for um, the protection of family and women. That is very important for the decision-making process in order to develop strategic actions to benefit girls. In connection with the NGO law, the content of decree for 2020 aims at improving the developing the development of Guatemala, guaranteeing transparency within NGOs, whether they're national or international, which does not represent a limitation to the freedom of association, freedom of expression, nor hinders the participation and defense of human rights by their members or the actions carried out by the NGOs. The state of Guatemala is available to continue having fruitful dialogues with the commission and civil society organizations. Thank you very much. Thank you to the representatives of the state. Now we will start with the participation of the commission. I will ask country rapporteur, Commissioner Arsemena, whether she has any questions. Thank you, Commissioner President. I want to greet all the representatives of the different organizations. The organizations have requested this hearing. They have given us the opportunity to listen all the different perspectives that tell us about the reality of the situation of women and the protection of the rights with the right to defend the rights, women human rights defender, to the representatives of the state of Guatemala we also want to uh, acknowledge the information provided that is quite vast and based on the contrast between the presentation made by uh, women uh, representatives and what has been stated by the representatives of the state so I want to ask both parties, how does the state measure this possibility to actively participate in the decision-making process about these programs, plans, policies? What is the extent of the participation according to the state and according to the representatives of the civil society organizations. When there's a, such great number of activities described by the state, the participation of civil society organizations may, may uh, explain what the re this really means. Secondly, regarding the policy that 
has been described for the life and the institutionality of the family, the protection of the life and institutionality of families. I go back to the previous question. How, ha how do um, civil society organizations participate in these policies? Does it have a coherent approach with a gender perspective? What truly represents the protection to life? And thirdly, I would like to know whether the state of Guatemala has detailed figures regarding the number of girls that were forced to carry their pregnancy or a forced maternity and what it represents for the life of that girl. And I like the name you gave, Ponete Las Pilas. I like that name. Do you know how they can fight against this? Through training, education, the number of pregnancies, of sexual violence cases, of rape, even within their um, own environment, the investigation of these events, having these figures is very important because it shows the importance of an intensive program regarding the education, sexual education. We need to train girls and boys adolescents regarding sexuality as part of their development. We all go through that. So in order to talk about protection of life, I would like to point out that a childhood with sexual violence data point out to girls under 14 years of age. And if there's violence, the category of sexual violence as well. That's all, Commissioner President. Thank you, Commissioner. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, Rapporteur on the Rights of Women. Um. Thank you, Madam President, and good afternoon to everyone, both from civil society who requested this um, session and the representatives of the state, and of course, all those from the Commission who are assisting us. Um, Madam President, I will um, uh, make some comments, uh, maybe ask some questions in relation to both my rapporteurships. I wanted to, um, to ask, um, there was mentioned, there's so much that one heard. And I, my first impression is that there's a clear divergence between the civil society's account and the state. Um, there, there, there are, there are there are certain instances where the state and, and the civil society converge in relation to certain mechanisms or agencies or institutions, the state, but very few. Most of the time, there seems to be a divergence. And there's such a large number of, um, of um, actions and um, laws and policies and so on that the state mentioned that this is impossible to keep them fully in mind. But I, I was struck by the mechanisms of telephonic reporting, um, which was mentioned by the state. And my question in that regard is, could the state tell us how effective 
those have been since they were established? And can they give us specific numbers um, of, of calls which they've received uh, making reports on, on domestic violence and violence against women and also um, uh, in relation to girls who are violated sexually um, in that regard, if we can have numbers, because they, they were of the, as a commission, we need specifics and, and generalization doesn't really help us to work effectively on our mandates. And I also wanted to ask the state to, on my rapporteurship of Afro-descended rights and against uh, racial discrimination as a racism, and um, to inform us um, about the situation of Afro-descendant women and girls in Guatemala and um, the numbers of um, violence suffered uh, who, the numbers of those who suffer violence, sexual, physical, psychological, and um, what both girls and women and what happens in relation to complaints made by them. And also I wanted to ask um, in relation to those who suffer domestic violence, how many shelters are there within the state for keeping the, the women victims and their children safe from the perpetrators? And what actions does the state take against the perpetrators of such violence? And, and to give us numbers as well. Um, I also would be very grateful if we can have, and, and the, the, of course, civil society can assist in it, that we are about specifics. Um, to whether we can have numbers about the prosecute the investigation and successful prosecution against perpetrators of sexual violence against what women, men, and transsex people, peoples, um, and both Afro descendants and non Afro descendants the indigenous community and others in the state. If we can have specifics about those um, as well, because we do need specific figures. And these are because we are concerned about the issue of impunity in relation to perpetrators of violence against women and girls and adolescents. So we would like specific numbers of prosecutions and those that fail and those that were successful. And if they fail, why they fail? And um, I think I would end there, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. I would like to give the floor to the uh, person representing the LGBT community. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, and uh, first vice president, I would like to also greet all the organizations uh, of the civil society who are present here and also the, the diverse uh, uh, representation of the state. I have three questions. The first one has to do with decree for 2020. Because in May, the Inter-American Commission issued a communique rejecting the enter into force of Decree 42020, which is part of the law of non-governmental organizations in accordance uh, and in accordance with the civil society. This uh, um, it has to do with the registration of the NGOs. And I have a specific concern about the impact of this law. Is there more precise information on the impact of this law? And how many organizations had in these two years or in this, this year, sorry, have canceled their uh, registration? Is there any perspective of changing the law? 
because uh, I also have the same concern as Esmeralda regarding the participation. Yes, what is the degree of participation of the civil society, the organized civil society in the programs, in the initiatives, and in the formulation of public policies regarding the human rights of women and of the LGBT community? That is the first question. The second question has to do with the uh, 5272 law. My dear colleagues, commissioners, uh, Margaret and Esmeralda have pointed out their concern for um, uh, this initiative because there are several topics involved here. We have the issue of family, but as a rapporteur, on uh, LGBT community. My concern has to do with uh, what was issued in 2017, which is a priority for the commission and for the rapporteurship regarding specifically the pluralistic concept of family as a diverse concept, as a plural concept. Uh, what is the family that is being protected is the concern because this project is it or not in harmony or in keeping with the inter-American standards in the sense that it refers to the issues or the concept, does it actually refer to a plural conception of family or concept of family? Thirdly, the issue of education. At the rapporteurship, we are promoting a fourth thematic report on cultural changes the protection of and including the protection of the LGBTQ plus community. Because the issue uh, of culture protecting rights, but also culture can violate rights as well. And in the region, we are deeply concerned about that culture that violates rights, transphobia, homophobia, and the violation of the most essential right that a person may have, which is the right to develop their human personality in a free, autonomous, and full manner. Yes, the right to being. So in this sense, I would like to know, because I took note of all the information that was mentioned, especially regarding the rights of women, prevention programs, programs to fight against violence, but I would like to also have more information, especially with respect to trans women, to LGBTI women, the regulatory framework for protection, for their protection, and the fight against discrimination based on sexual identity and gender and how they are fighting against violence based on gender and sexual identity. So what the policies are, what the programs are that are gender-based and which focus on sexual diversity, because for the commission, this constitutes an essential key to fight against discrimination. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Before I give the floor to the rapporteurs and to the executive secretary, I also have some specific questions. For the case of the state, the state has presented a large number of activities, uh, training activities. I wanted to ask two things. First of all, if there is a baseline, if there was an evaluation conducted before the trainings regarding what the level of knowledge was uh, in terms of uh, the knowledge and sexual uh, education, et cetera, and if the real impact was measured after the training was conducted. And in the same vein, if the definitions of gender stereotypes were included in these trainings, considering the prior mandates for Guatemala of the commission. And regarding the civil society, this law for uh, remediation for women who have been uh, subject to this form of violence, you said that it hadn't been fully implemented because of gender stereotypes. Can you elaborate and maybe can the state explain what is really happening with the implementation of the law? I would like to ask the executive secretary, Taina Ramos, if she has any questions. Yes, I do have a question. Go ahead. Thank you very much to the state representation of Guatemala for all the information. And thank you very much to our uh, friends from the civil society for painting such a specific picture. I would like to ask a question to Mayra Dinora. Mayra, 
you spoke about 172 violent deaths of women between January and June 2021, out of which 42% can be registered as femicides. I would like to know if these are official numbers and if you uh, base this information on official numbers and also ask the state of Guatemala if they have official numbers regarding violence against women uh, specifically uh, femicides. And a second question for the state as well. The representative of the state mentioned a budget with a gender approach, which have specific classifications. And in that regard, I would like to know whether this budget is labeled as women's issues or it's a budget labeled as gender sensitive or uh, differentiated policies for men and women for uh, members of the LGBT community. How is it perceived from the state of Guatemala? How does a gender based budget work in Guatemala? How is it perceived? And finally, I would like to ask the representative of the states regarding the commissions for the prevention of violence. He emphasized specifically on the digital platform called Jo Denuncio, I Denounce, and uh, the sex offenders registry. But I would like to know whether you have specific actions for the prevention of violence. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you very much, Madam Executive Secretary. I would like to ask Maria Claudia Purido if she has any questions or comments. Yes, thank you. First of all, I would like to say hello to everyone and just mention the fact that the Commission has followed up on this issue very closely uh, regarding the situation of women in Guatemala and particularly they have had a series of uh, discussions with the state of Guatemala in order to move forward with the possibility of a visit, a promotional visit focusing on the promotion of standards, particularly those established by the report of the Commission regarding violence against women, children and adolescents. Having heard the voices of women, who have presented a situation uh, that is so serious and so delicate uh, in during this hearing and at the same time all of the information presented by the state i think it would be very favorable this environment would be very favorable to consider the possibility of this visit this promotional visit that could allow the, for the continuation of this dialogue, uh, maybe virtual, because we know that we still don't have the possibility of doing this face to face. But uh, in this way, we could uh, refer and address the state through formal notes, etc. So I would like to just reiterate the fact that we are interested, still interested in that type of visit, and we believe that this would be a very important possibility. Thank you, Madam President, and uh, thank you all. I would like to give the floor to Soledad Garcia uh, and then uh, move on. Soledad, go ahead. Just very briefly, I think everything has been said and asked, but I would like to thank every participant and regarding the, per the initiative 5272, I think that at the end, the state mentioned that they had conducted a technical evaluation of this project. If you could share that evaluation with us, it would be very good for the commission and the mandate uh, because it, it has to do with other rights, rights to health and, and reproductive health, among others. Uh, the commissioner asked about uh, what concept of family and the concept of life, I think. Where is the life of women? Where does the life of women uh, come into play into all of this. And then I asked the petitioners of the hearings mention uh, gender biology. I know this is being used in Guatemala, but I think it, it's good to mention that the commission, as has happened with Redesca as well, with many communiques, we see that concept with great concern because we consider that gender perspective is necessary to protect adequately the human rights. So I think that just mentioned that uh, gender biology is a, a term that uh, is of concern to the commission. Civil society, 12 minutes, go ahead. 
Thank you very much, Madam Commissioners. I would like to begin by responding to some of the issues that concern me. I would like to start with the campaign, Ponete las pilas, so get your act together. Um, we are aware of that campaign. However, as you can see, we, I mean, we will be send you the arguments that were presented in the campaign. These arguments were patriarchal and fundamentalist uh, concepts uh, because uh, they, they were of this nature. And therefore, there was no possibility for children or girls and adolescents to decide because there were many I mean, there are many of the cases of violence are by the family. The interdisciplinary group carried out an investigation in 2006 uh, of sentences that had been issued in courtrooms in Guatemala in cases of violence against women or sexual crimes committed against women. And we saw that in most cases, the perpetrators was a family member. Therefore, we do not have the necessary conditions for women to decide, let alone girls, of course, and even worse in a context of a pandemic. So we believe that these cases are under registered. There is also a denial of the state to accept uh, integrated sexual education in schools. There is a very clear statement made by a congresswoman uh, that who said that she didn't want sexual education in our schools. She basically said it to the Minister of Education. We also must clarify the fact that for that uh, law of remediation that was mentioned, the problem here was that it had an unfavorable ruling by the uh, commission and therefore it wasn't approved and will not be approved because the Congress from the beginning said no. Then the direct question that Tanya asked regarding the 172 violent deaths that we have registered, uh, the data indicates uh, this, this was taken from the Guatemalan group of women, and these are official numbers. Actually, we have 238 uh, violent deaths or femicides and 172, which uh, are actually in the, the first three months, 172, 238 to date. I would also like to talk about the NGO Act. since this was recently implemented and it's it was put into force recently the civil society has stopped the entering into force of this law however uh, the uh, my colleague will be able to mention what happened with respect to this law and it's not in force but actions were already being taken uh, with respect to this initiative as if it was in force but we are struggling. It is a struggle and the problem is not only the monitoring of the surveillance that they want to do, but the risk here is that there is uh, the concept, for example, of public order and it's the government that decides what public order is and we know that this is a double-edged sword. Thank you. Good afternoon. I would like to mention a few points that were discussed. We are aware of the fact that uh, with respect to CONAPREVI, certain women's organizations participate in this mechanism. And I would like to mention a question that was asked to us regarding the participation of the civil society organizations. We have verified that when our participation is there, when our proposals are taken into account, and when we participate in the exercise of our citizenship, processes move forward. However, this has not been the case in many of the processes that have taken place. Many women's organizations are represented in CONAPREVI, and they are the ones who share information with us. And when selecting the uh, authorities, as we uh, reported before, we congratulate the person who has been appointed to that position, Ana Leticia Aguilar. 
and we know that the participation of women's organizations in these spaces is essential. Therefore, these uh, spaces have allowed us to verify that when our opinion is taken into account, the process can change. And with respect to Planovi, uh, in 2019, in December, there was a public presentation, but uh, previ, uh, with specific resources to uh, for the implementation of this plan. Conaprevi, since 2013, does not have a resource assigned in the uh, budget of the state. And so in this sense, it is important to point out that for Planovi to work, it must have resources assigned by each institution in order to carry out coordinated and strategic measures. It is also important to mention that all actions that are carried out, including integrated care models, which are integrated uh, at, at all times, must be part of an integrated framework. Planovi provides general guidelines regarding what must be done in the state of Guatemala. And in this sense, we would like to reiterate something that we have been asking for a while. This is not the first time that we discuss this. We have already said this at other hearings. And instead of move, moving forward, what we see is that our participation is being uh, undermined constantly. And it is not just us. It is women in general who participate in different processes at a national level. With respect to Los Caimos, I would like to mention the fact that there are 13 Caimos working right now. They have no resources to work. Seven shelters are uh, now available that women's organizations are putting into practice. Of course, with many limitations, there is a great demand uh, of women who are victims of domestic violence. And regarding the training processes, this will not be able to materialize if we do not have the full support to CONAPREVI because the law is very clear regarding who is in charge of each task regarding violence against women. Also, I would like to mention the NGO Act or law, women's organizations are not saying that they want to, they don't want to be audited as has been said in the media, no. What we are saying is that the free participation in the women, in these women's organizations should not be uh, influenced by, uh, you know, something, someone going against our right to speak freely. Thank you very much. Marcia Aguiluz from Women's Link. Just to wrap up certain specific topics, I would like to first mention what uh, Commissioner Mantis has mentioned regarding the importance of establishing indicators that give an account of the effectiveness of the trainings that have been conducted. Of course, we embrace the possibility of being able to exchange information, but the truth is certain indicators are of concern. For example, the prosecutor's office indicates certain actions and protocols, which of course are welcome. But the last piece of information that we have from CC regarding impunity, uh, regarding violence against women, speaks about a level of impunity that reaches 97.4%. So it must be very clear in order to know how these actions translate into adequate implementations, which actually protects the rights of women and little girls. Another question that Commissioner Esmeralda Arizomena mentioned regarding violence, uh, uh, sexual violence, in our presentation, we mentioned that there are 50,354 uh, cases of violence in, only in 2020. So these numbers are alarming and not just this, they don't even match the investigations that are being conducted. And a third point uh, is, a, uh, is the policy for family and life. Based on the information that we have, this policy is being based on uh, extremist thoughts, religious thoughts. Even the president of the Republic has spoken about, you know, this issue of protecting life. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the issue of gender diversity. Yes, we do not 
believe that there is gender ideology, but uh, it is unfortunately language that is being used by many, you know, gender ideology. This is, is an issue of concern. And the fact that it was a technical committee created, but this technical committee does not include the organizations and the women who defend the rights of other women. So law 5272, uh, if this will translate into these law for the family and for life, will surely go against the rights of women and girls. So open up the participation. That is our request. Include us in the discussions and the negotiations. I believe that the executive secretary has said something very important. We should promote a visit by the commission and we are open to dialogue. We embrace, of course, and, and uh, congratulate the state for uh, appointing Ms. Aguilar because she is very committed to the rights of women. And I hope this is the starting point of a new negotiation, a new dialogue where we can, for example, uh, work on the CAIMUS, this, these associations and ensure that they receive the budget that they need. Certain public officials have spoken against, you know, uh, feminism and they speak about these issues in a certain way. And we must ensure the implementation of the law, the femicide law, because right now it is you being used to prevent acts of corruption, but in a very inadequate manner. So we must have some form of dialogue so that the Guatemalan state can actually issue these uh, policies to improve the lives of women and girls. Right now, we have seen the opposite, but we are more than willing to uh, engage in dialogue and the space that the commission has provided us can be used to ensure this type of dialogue. The visit is a very good idea and the state maybe can define some opportunity where you can have a private state for organizations to clearly uh, mention these topics. I think this would be something that would be very important and to make clear, make it clear to the state that our intention is to help that we have experience, we have the knowledge, and we have the willingness to help the state to ensure that the rights of women and girls are respected. But we need the participation and the willingness of the state. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will now give the floor to the state for 12 minutes as well. Thank you, Madam President. I'm going to try to provide some information about I can share with you right now. There is some information you are requesting that will require us to go back to the institutions to gather that information so that we can send it to you. That's why we will ask you to to have that possibility of sending that information later. Thank you. I could like to take into account what the civil society uh, member just mentioned in order to request the state of Guatemala faces many challenges and we all agree on that many challenges that are related to um, processes of uh, governance creation and organization to face policy, public policy management to favor and guarantee the rights of women, but also of all sectors of society. Those challenges to a large extent, from a technical point of view, have to do with many vacuum spaces in terms of timely information, effective information, national systems of information that provide data figures to fully comprehend the situation of women in different areas. But in terms of violence against women, there's a national system of information about violence against women that makes a great effort in order to gather, compile this information. But we have a huge challenge because the plan that we have mentioned 
establishes a diagnosis that is quite extensive about those challenges faced by the state of Guatemala in order to guarantee timely information and figures that allow us to define institutional priorities for our uh, for the focus of our attention we work with figures that are not necessarily part of that national system they are not official uh, figures because we have problems gathering information and we have huge challenges ahead that are related to different factors that impact on our capacity. Thus, regarding figures, we will have to make greater effort to satisfy your demands. Regarding the participation of women, how they participate in the different spaces, decision-making spaces within the state, I want to say that the state is organized. As you know, it has a robust legal framework of public policies that guide the guidelines, the priorities of the public management or public policies. However, this is not necessarily developed or translated into action for the creation of mechanism to create uh, spaces of dialogue with the different sectors of the civil society. However, there are mechanisms, formal and official mechanisms such as Konatevi, that is a space we, that comes with the participation of all the state institutions that are related to violence against women and women participate in the CONAPREVI and that is the space for them to present their opinion, their perspectives, their proposals. Thus, depends on many, that depends on many factors that related to many aspects and the political will of all the uh, officials that participate in the public sector of being open and keep this uh, dialogue with women organizations. It has its ups and downs, but in general terms, the state acknowledges those spaces of participation and has opened them so that we can engage in dialogue with the organizations. Another space the state uh, Guatemala organized in order to guarantee women's rights, this uh, national council is a law in the country after peace accords were signed to enable the participation of civil society organizations that were interested in the development of the country, such as women, peasants, union leaders. 14 civil society sectors participate in the National Council, and women are one of them. This council is organized, and each of the segments in this Council participate. There are committees, for example, about women and the civil society organizations participate in the territories. And there is a national council of urban and rural development as well. The challenges in terms, I don't recall who said it, but in terms of the factors related to the practices and social um, imagery about the role of women in society, its role in society. It is not easy to open spaces of participation for women, but is enshrined in the law 
it is guaranteed by public policies. And that's why the Secretariat of Women and the Presidential Secretariat of Women is in charge of that. Regarding participation, how we measure participation, I could say that we can make an effort to gather that information. We have huge challenges with topics related to how women perceive the role within this decision-making process and the actions taken by the states to promote, um, enable, and guarantee the participation of women in decision-making processes. I wanted to say that in general, regarding the budget with a gender approach, that is something I can answer right now. This has been taking place for a long time in the country. We started implementing the SEPREM, which has a fundamental role. And this classification of the budget with a gender approach has to do with expenses to favor women within the public policy actions and the institutional priorities of each state actor. That is what has been done so far. And it is part of the budget law. This budgetary classification with a gender approach is described in the law. There are annual reports that the DS office makes regarding this. And we have a challenge that is related to the strengthening of this sequent with the classification of the budget, a factor that hinders the development of public policy actions that favor women, the national policies for the de comprehensive development of women. That is what I wanted to say. I don't know if my colleagues from the delegation want to add something about this. Otherwise, I could um, repeat the need for us to go back to our institutions to gather the information that was requested, Madam President. If the state has concluded, we are going to conclude the hearing. I want to once again thank civil society organizations, not only because they have participated here, here in the hearing, but because of the continuous work they carry out also to the state, the acknowledgement of this need to transform the Convention Belén du Pará includes among the duties of the state, the transformation of social educational situations that ensure that perpetrate the role of subordination of women, but it's very important. Also, the secretary of the monitoring section about the visit, I think that we can organize that and also to foster that dialogue between the state and the civil society. As I have said, if there is further information, for example, Margaret mentioned uh, after the sentence, all the information that was requested, if you could send it, we would appreciate that. And also the monitoring section of the commission supports the development of inter-American standards, those standards that already exist. The commission understands the situation in that sense. We are aware of all these standards as Commissioner Piovesan mentioned, but also the consultative measure of the court regarding principle of non-discrimination. And in the different reporters, the commission has um, inter-American standards and guidelines that can contribute to this. I want to conclude this hearing by restating that it's been a pleasure for 
us, for the commission, for the members of the executive secretariat. And I want to say that it's the first time in history that the commission has a board made up by women, also a women executive secretary, and we should not forget that. Thank you.